Hey fourth grade, we are back with our second global studies lesson. This time, we are going to talk about what is going on in our world right now. The coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! In this lesson, our essential question we are going to answer is, what is a pandemic? So, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain what a pandemic is and how it affects your life. So let's get into it. First of all, a pandemic is an outbreak of a disease that spreads worldwide. It's a global disease. What we are all experiencing right now with COVID-19 is a pandemic because it is a disease that is spreading around the world not just where we are in Philadelphia. Well, what exactly causes a pandemic? How do pandemics happen? These might be questions you're asking. There can be different reasons for each pandemic, but let's take a look at a few. First, infected food or water. One huge way a pandemic can happen is if the food or water of a certain place gets infected with the disease. If the local water supply or food supply of a place or city gets infected, then the people who drink that water and eat that food have a chance of catching the disease, starting a pandemic. Secondly, an introduction of a new disease. Sometimes a germ that causes a disease may change, transform, and become more infectious. This means it can easily infect more people and make more and more people sick. Third, lower resistance to a disease. If a place is experiencing things like food shortages, no health care, or health care that's not accessible, the people there could be easily susceptible to a virus causing a pandemic. And lastly, natural disasters or wars. Natural disasters and wars can trigger the start of epidemics and then pandemics by causing infected water, bringing in new diseases from other countries, and lowering the resistance to disease of a population. So now our question is, how do diseases spread? Once a community or country catches a disease, how does it spread to other communities and other countries? Well, here are a few main causes. First, insects or animals. Many insects and animals can carry diseases and transmit them from person to person. Examples of insect-borne uh, diseases include malaria, which is spread by mosquitoes. Next, another cause could be through airborne transmission, meaning through the air. Infections can travel through the air usually when a person coughs or sneezes or releases any kind of liquid out of their mouth. This is why people warn you to wear a mask when you go outside of your house to reduce the risk of catching germs from other people. Just today, when I went to the store to buy tissues, there was a huge sign at the door that said you are not allowed to enter without a mask, so businesses are taking it seriously too. Other examples of airborne diseases include the flu and measles. And another way diseases might spread is through food and water. Some diseases can spread through infected food or water like we talked about. Examples of this include cholera and typhoid fever. Now let's focus on COVID-19, also known as coronavirus. Coronavirus! If you've been staying in touch with the news reports about Corona, you probably already know what it is. But let me go through it just in case. COVID-19 is a respiratory disease that is spread from person to person. A respiratory disease means it affects the lungs, the body part that helps us breathe. COVID-19 can cause mild to severe illness and flu-like symptoms. It's been reported to affect more severely people who are 65 years and older and people of any age who have serious medical problems, such as asthma. But that doesn't mean you can go out and hang out with your friends because you're 10 years old. 
Anybody can be infected with this disease regardless of your age and health if the virus enters your body. Currently, there have been over 2.7 million cases of COVID-19 and 191,000 deaths. And in just Philadelphia, as of April 24th, there have been over 9,000 cases and 365 deaths so far. So staying inside is no joke, guys. We need to stay safe from this virus and keep our family members safe. Now, let's analyze COVID-19 based on the information we learned at the beginning of this lesson. So when we ask the question, what causes a pandemic? These four options were the causes. Let's see if we can figure out which one of these is the cause of COVID-19. Was it infected food or water? Was it the introduction of a new disease? Was it a lower resistance to a disease? Or was the cause natural disasters or wars? Think about it. The answer is the introduction of a new disease. COVID-19 is actually a new version of the coronavirus. The term coronavirus represents a group of diseases. That's why we call it COVID-19, because technically there are many types of coronaviruses. And many of you might have thought that the correct answer was infected food or water. Who heard about the bat soup? Well, the bat soup story isn't actually true. The people in Wuhan, China, where the virus first broke out, were not eating bat soup. So what scientists think actually happened was that a bat with the coronavirus disease infected another animal that lives near the people in Wuhan. Next, let's try to answer our second question. How do diseases spread? So how do you think COVID-19 spread? Did it spread through insects or animals, airborne transmission, or food and water? The answer is airborne transmission through the air. Remember when we said we need to wear masks when we go outside? That's because this virus spreads through the air. Now I highlighted insects or animals with orange and if you said that, I'll give you half credit. Because you're right, we did talk about how the bat spread the virus to another animal, which then passed it on to humans. But the more important point is that this virus spreads through the air through coughing and sneezing. So we really, really must be careful. Now let's move on to our final and maybe the most important question you're wondering. Looking into the future as global leaders, how do pandemics end? We all want this pandemic to end, right? We don't want school to stay closed. Well, maybe some of you. We don't want people to get sick or die. We don't want to go back. We want to go back outside and see our friends, right? So how is this going to end? Well, learning through history, we have a few solutions that we hope to have with COVID-19 pandemic. First, vaccines or treatments. Many doctors and scientists are working very hard around the world to research and find a vaccine or a cure for this virus so that when people do catch it, we have a vaccine to treat it with. Another thing that most countries are doing is something called containment. Now, how many of you look like this dog right now on your bed or your couch? I know some days I do. Staying indoors is part of containment. Containment is when countries keep a virus under control and prevent it from spreading outside of their country. So when China first started noticing that this virus was spreading, they ordered a lockdown or stay at home order so the virus wouldn't spread. Now, unfortunately, because this virus is so infectious and because there are people still traveling to and from China and other countries, even the United States, the people traveling carrying the virus 
brought it to the other countries. Third, many people are hoping that humans build up immunity. Immunity is when your body builds like a shield to protect itself from germs and diseases. So hopefully more people can build immunity to this disease over time. And finally, seasonal changes could end this pandemic. Some viruses can't survive in the heat. Scientists are trying to study whether COVID-19 is a virus that can't survive in the heat. If it is, then we will see COVID-19 cases go down in the summer when it gets hotter. But even then, there's still a possibility that it will return once it gets colder again in the fall and winter. So bottom line is we must continue to be careful, listen to the scientists, doctors, and experts, and stay inside. All right, now here is your exit ticket. How is the COVID-19 pandemic affecting your life? I want to know. So, you have two options to submit your work. One is for you to write a paragraph answering the question. You can answer your question by writing a paragraph in the comments section under this post on our Google Classroom page. Option two, record a video of yourself answering the question. You must give me seven solid sentences on the video that answer our exit ticket question. Then send me your video to my email or my phone. Or if you're feeling like a super scholar today, you can do both. Yay! That's it for today. So I'll see you guys during our Harambe and office hours. Stay safe. Yay!